Everybody, Victor Marks here. This will not be a, a short little video, and it's it's going to border on being very personal and a tad bit vulnerable, but I want to share my heart with those of you who care about our ministry, care about my family and, uh, and me. Um, and so I'm just going to be very direct. I've been suffering with depression um, for about 14 months now. Um, I know I've had people even close to me say, gosh, but you always seem so happy and up. And you know what? That's, that's not uncommon for someone with depression who's a full throttle person uh, and never gives up. The problem is it just caught up with me. Uh, I endured for about 14 months and was under a doctor's care. Uh, but it recently, uh, a few weeks ago, I had no other options and I stopped functioning to the point where I could continue uh, working in a healthy way. Uh, and I just hit bottom. It, people will ask me, well, why? Why did you get into a depression? I think it started with my brother dying, who was killed unexpectedly in a vehicle. And me. You know, struggling to process that and grieving. I didn't give myself time to grieve because of multiple missions that we've gone on from the Canadian rescue to, gosh, Israel twice, the West Bank, seeing the massacre and the, the slaughter of so many innocent people inside Israel, um, then into Gaza. And, you know, during that time period, folks, those of you who don't know, someone tried to kill me by taking a shot at me. Actually, here where I live, and it was someone we were trying to help. Uh, so, you know, I felt ambushed, it was point blank. And, um, you know, my natural instinct and response, which I did, I drove my weapon and I got off the X and I could have easily killed him. But I felt like God said, don't shoot him. So I didn't. And um, a couple of times, even while he was still shooting. Uh, and that's as a man, as a warrior, and someone who's had to make tough decisions before. Um, that was very difficult for me not to kill a person who was shooting at me. And uh, again, more missions uh, uh, or oversight on seeing bad people, pedophiles get caught, our Cambodian outreach. We developed a think tank within that 14 months, which is a huge undertaking. And then as a result, a task force, which is in my opinion, second to none right now on what we're doing and how we're doing it to protect children. So uh, multiple things that really just weighed in me, weighed on me and kept pressuring me down. Of course, I still have a marriage, five children, five grandchildren, my friends. And listen, I have had all the normal stuff people have to deal with from major, major disruptions in our ministry, people that needed to leave, um, the stress. Um, I, we're caregivers. My wife and I are caregivers to our parents, 88 and 89. And we love doing it, but they're right here uh, where we live. And I have a mother who's single and elderly and things weigh on me with her. Not to mention everyday life, phone calls, texts, emails, social media posts, comments, DMs, speaking events, uh, me writing and responding, doing videos for organizations like Turning Point Faith and Dr. Dobson. Um, there's just a slew of stuff. And on top of all that, uh, we wrote a book that's going to be coming out uh, this summer called Dangerous Gentlemen. So I share all that kind of being transparent. We're kind of funneled down. And, you know, I have TBI and the neurologist had said many years ago, you have to stop doing what you're doing or it's gonna catch you. And now it's been 15 missions later overseas, uh, 15 times overseas since then. So what am I doing now? I take appropriate steps to identify. I, I can't just out muscle of this or out pray it. So I've taken a sabbatical. And uh, <laughs> you know, um, 
I, was, I started about two weeks ago. Three days into the sabbatical, <laughs> I, uh, I develop a little rash and uh, it ends up being shingles. So it's, it's funny, at least my kids are laughing. They're going, of course, Dad, you're gonna develop shingles three days into your sabbatical. I tried to do one of these before, many years ago. It lasted eight days. We were in Costa Rica at one of my brother's properties. And, um, and it lasted, that one lasted eight days because there were 20, I think it was 23 kids and women that need to be rescued in Iraq from ISIS. And it required me physically being present. And my bride said, babe, of course, let's go. Uh, so, but this one, I'm gonna take my time. I feel better already. There's been a spiritual component because the enemy will attack you when you're down. The enemy will seek to destroy you. Uh, and I've had all the dark thoughts depression brings with it. And I forgot how bad it was because I've had it once before in my life, you know, gosh, 30 years ago. But this one caught me pretty good. God is blessing the ministry. Listen, God is so faithful and he's blessing us. Your prayers make the difference. The other day I asked for prayer. I just, I mean, and believe me, God delivered me from heavy demonic influence. It was horrible. And um, remember, I was on the Sean Ryan podcast, millions have watched clips of that, people being ministered to. And we have a spiritual warfare film coming out this year. So I'm catching my breath. I'm getting refreshed. I'm spending time with God. If there's one thing I could ask is, Pray for me that I would get to know God in a new way, in a deep way as a father, because that's always been my challenge. I've never hid that. I love Jesus. I follow him as a disciple. I'm obedient. I love him. But God as a father has always been a challenge because of my background. And I know it with my mind and, and I understand to be a loving father, but this next level is what I need more than anything, especially before we hit it this year. I, and and uh, it's a new season we're in. So I wanted to share. I know people have texted me. I'm, I'm not using my old number. I have a private number now. Uh, I'm not checking my emails. That's being forwarded to someone else. I, I really am taking a sabbatical uh, for the right reasons and for the right amount of time. So thank you for my bride, uh, my family, my friends that are walking with us through this. And for my staff, thank you. Please keep all of them in prayer because we've all been under it. Uh, our temple and pace uh, to advance the kingdom has been um, extremely intense. But God has us in a new season where more fruit will come, I believe, in God's way in this next season. Thank you. And for any of you that are struggling, don't give up. Please don't give up. We love you. Talk to someone. Get help if you need medication. No medication. It's not, it's not forever, but talk to someone. Don't give up. Don't let the enemy harangue you into doing things where you make permanent decisions for a temporary problem. God is faithful, and he loves you.